What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Kofi Kingston, a.k.a. one-third of the New Day. You're not going to say it with me, sir? Oh, oh yeah, God. come on. You better participate. Let's try, Let's try it again. <laughs> one-third of the New Day. And you are watching The Young and the Wrestlers. <laughs> Welcome to the Young and the Wrestlers, the pop culture's WWE podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Betson, alongside... I feel as good as Matt Hardy in a neck brace. I'm Jem. That's a really a lot of mixed emotions right there. <laughs> he's, having a, he's, he's having a rough time, but he's well-supported, and that's important. Mm-hmm. This right. is our Raw Breakdown. This comes at you usually every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. on your podcast services, 9 a.m. on those YouTubes. If you want to join that wrestling conversation, head over to uh, our social media. It's facebook.com slash groups slash the pop culture is Twitter, Discord, Instagram. All those links are in the down below area. If you want to, if you want to watch the show as it happens live, head over to twitch.tv slash the pop culture is where you'll see myself and Jim chat. Hello before we do the show as well as doing the show and then post show it's a bunch of different show you get just by joining us live we also stream games here sometimes it's all fun but if you want to support us in uh, some financial fashions head over to patreon.com slash the pop as well as the merch shop the pop slash shop we can buy shirts and other assorted shit with our logos on it gem how are you i am good it, it's been a very long sort of couple of weeks um but i moved into the new place everything is set up and good to go um and yeah i'm just now trying to sit back and relax how are you i'm well i'm well man like i'm uh, pretty good so uh, <laughs> uh it's been an interesting week um mm-hmm. i say that as in like as i mentioned last week so last week was supposed to be uh my stress week um because of the audit that was all done we're like fuck yeah the week after the audit this should be stress-free now it isn't we had three separate incidents this week we went from going having no incidents to having one on audit week to having three this week i don't know what's going on so that is why we are recording this tonight so that's thursday for those watching live uh and you guys are getting it on friday on your podcast feeds uh uh, mostly because uh, the original intention was to do the show yesterday. However, mm. I didn't leave work until 6.30, two hours after I was supposed to. And then the night before, I didn't. I did the exact same thing because I, of all these things. So I had no time to watch Raw. And yeah. then and then by the time we got here, I'm like, I'm not going to finish this before we even get the show mm. started. So, and then, Jem, you, you've just wrapped up Moving House as well. Mm-hmm. So a couple little bit left over from last week. So... Mm-hmm. it's all chaos but it's all well and good though we can still keep moving forward now mm-hmm. and start chatting about this week's episode of Ro. Mm-hmm. before i do that i yeah. should say hey to sarah in the chat hey sarah hey Thor. hello i think i know why everything's going crazy this week i heard like mercury's making lemonade or something like that so what <laughs> have you not seen the jokes about mercury and retrograde no Oh, it's a dumb thing that I've seen going around and people are like making up words for it. Like, you know, instead of Mercury's in retrograde, it's like, oh, Mercury made lemonade or some dumb shit like that. I'm not down with your, you young kids and oh, your it memes. Was, it was, oh, I'm bummed out that that didn't land now because it's such a good joke. Oh, I'm sure it landed for the chat because I'm sure <laughs> they are up to date in the current internet culture. I myself... I'm not. I forgot you're a dad. You don't know. I'm a dad. I know dad things. (laughs) That's about it. You know, know, like what I know is I know that James watched Toy Story 4 three times today. (laughs) I know that movie pretty well. Yeah. If there's there's any Toy Story memes, oh, right up in those bad boys. I know know how to handle those. Yeah. Speaking of things that that, uh, we all both knew how to handle, Jim, let's talk about Randy Orton. Yes. Yes, another piss poor apology. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, you're not. Like, the, the, he, he said it a couple of weeks ago in the chat, but Champion Gamer said it right when he was like, you know, why are people acting shocked? Like, this is what Randy does and it's yeah. what he's done for the past however long he's been. But speaking of internet culture, that's the thing now. Everyone has mm-hmm. to apologize for everything. Mm-hmm. And that's what they're doing. Yeah. They're, they're pushing that, uh, that internet culture onto this man. It's like, mm-hmm. what, do you explain what he did, what he did? He's like, I just fucking did it, all right? Mm-hmm. I'm, 
I'm Rand I'm Randaddy Orton, and mm-hmm. sometimes I just do things. This time, mm-hmm. to- this is one of those things. Yeah, and I found it really interesting because Randy Orton, when he was speaking, he did make note that, like you know, um, they said earlier, like as the credits were opening and whatever. Um, that it was the first time they've been in Winnipeg in 15 years. And Randy Orton's like, you know, 15 years ago to the day, um, I got punched in the face by Edge when I was the Intercontinental Championship in this arena. Um, champion. Intercontinental he was the belt. It was very He impressive. was the belt. Belt. Um, belt. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, yeah, you know, like, you know, my friend Adam, you guys know him as Edge and everybody else he starts chanting Edge. Weird, and- Edge, weird. Yeah, we want Edge and that sort of stuff. And he's like, well, he's not going to be here because of what I did to it. He's not here because I fucked him up. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and I'm thinking, you know, they were showing obviously highlight reels of what happened with Matt Hardy two weeks in a row and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, God, who's going to cop it next? And then... And I was like... Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, shit, what's KO got to do with this? Uh, apparently he has uh, put aside his issues with what he calls the Monday Night Moron and ah, his buddy like Murphy. Ah, well done. Uh, yep, I thought that was great. And he's like, he's your buddy Murphy. Um, and he's like, you know, I'm putting aside those issues tonight because I have an issue with you and mm-hmm. what you did. Um, and he's basically like, you know, I grew up idolizing Edge and watching you, you know, I was bummed when he had to retire because I was like, I'm never going to wrestle him. And then he came back and you took that all away the next night and you took that away from me as well. And I have an issue with that. Um, And Randy's like, you don't want to put yourself in this position, Kevin. And he's like, oh, I think I do. And then, um, yeah, KO ends up offering a challenge uh, that Randy Orton accepts and Mm -hmm. they have a match later in the night. Um, So it is the main event of the night, this match. Mm -hmm. As it should Um, be. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so during the match, obviously, Seth, AOP, and, and Murphy do come out um, to distract Kevin Owens, I guess. Um, and they sort of surround the ring while this match is going on between Kevin and Randy. Um, and then next minute, the Street Profits and the Viking Raiders come running out and take on um, everybody while that's all happening. Um and then somehow Seth Rollins comes back and he ends up uh, uh, like distracting Kevin Owens. So Randy gets a win. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a quick count. That's the thing. Like Randy got the pin and the referee didn't even lay pr- down properly. Like like was on all fours. He's like, one, two, three. And everybody's like, what the uh, fuck? So kind of like that time that I was Shane McMahon was the guest. was like, did it. Yeah, yeah, real quick count. And I was like, um, okay, what's going on here? And then the guy like slid out of the ring and kept checking on Seth Rollins. And Seth's like, I'm fine. Like, what are you doing? Leave me alone. I'm fine. Um, and I thought something was up there. I was like, okay, something. Because he kept saying sir and things like this. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, and then, yeah, Randy nicks off. And this guy like, um, oh, no, Seth um, ends up grabbing chairs first. And throws him in the ring and he's like telling Randy to listen to the voices and you know we want to do it and basically give um, KO the concerto. Um, and like Randy goes to do it, but KO gets up with a chair and he like goes to go Randy with the chair and Randy just drops his and leaves. Mm. Um, and then um, um, KO goes to go after Seth um, who runs off and like he like catches the, the referee who was like still by Seth's side this entire time, throws him back in the ring, rips open his shirt, and he's wearing a Monday Night Messiah t-shirt. No, no, the worst. Oh, you piece of shit. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it, you piece of shit. Um, And everybody's like chanting yes for Kevin to hit this poor guy with a chair. And um, and then like first like Seth's like, hey, like he's a good man. Don't do that to him. He's a good man. Like he's an honest man. Like, and then like... um, KO like yells at you know him or something like that and Seth's like I don't know this guy I've never seen him in my life it's like two seconds ago you were saying he's a good man don't do this to him what are you doing well it's Um, one of those things it's like he's a good man because he believes in in me and he's a supporter of me other than that I don't give a shit about him but (laughs) yeah but yeah um Ultimately, um, he get the the referee that did the quick count cops a stunner, and then he cops uh, getting smashed through the table, and that's the end of that chapter. This is interesting. So what we're seeing here is we're seeing that uh, the the word of the Monday Night Messiah is getting out there, and it's getting it in the ears of uh, particular people. Now, mm-hmm. not particular of high power at this stage, but particular of mm-hmm. some power. 
Like if if this is one ref that's been affected by it by the Monday Night Messiah, who's who's not saying that there's who more? knows who else? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that was an interesting little step, uh, uh, like uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, escalation, I mm. guess. Um, but yeah, I'm that actually has me really interested, like uh, to see where this is going to go now, because clearly Seth is getting some reach now. Like who has he reached out to? You know, I thought he was going to try and recruit Randy by you know playing on his you know clear mental illness with those voices mm-hmm. in his head um but yeah i'm i'm actually like initially i was starting to get sick of this feud but it's actually developing really well and i'm really excited to see where it goes same i got and i i'm on like i said i'm a similar boat with you because uh it's one of those things if you think about it, like where will this go where will this lead who who will uh who will turn next who, who mm. will present themselves as a disciple as a, a disciple, follower yeah. of the monday yeah. night messiah and Mm-hmm. I, I like this idea of this uh, uh, almost, yeah, you know, yeah, cultish, I guess, sort of cultish mm. uh, uh, sense, almost as in it's infiltrated like all areas of WWE. Like everyone mm-hmm. is, a, anyone can be affected, anyone can be there. Mm-hmm. So you may, maybe next time uh, Seth, sorry, next time Kevin gets a beat, a beating, goes to the doctor, doctor malpractice, because why? Mm. Monday Night Messiah. Yeah, exactly right. You Follow. never know. It's very interesting. Um, but, you know, leading into that, there was, before the main event, there was actually a match with Seth Rollins and Murphy that facing is cr- the Street Profits. Yeah. Now, my I thought this was supposed to be two singles matches. Well, it was. Mm-hmm. So it was like, it was um, Seth Rollins versus Angelo Dawkins no, Seth Rollins versus Montez Ford and Murphy versus uh, Angelo Dawkins. Mm. So, yeah, I, when they came out together, I was like, tag team match. And then they, like, split off and, like, Buddy Murphy and Dawkins got in the ring. And I was like, oh, I get it now. Like, they've just obviously come out as supportive. Um, so, um, yeah, for some reason, Angelo Dawkins called them the Monday – called um, – called Seth the Monday Night Moron and he called Buddy Murphy uh, Murphy uh, Murph the Smurf. And I was like... Not a, lot of th- not, he- not a lot of thought went into that. Yeah, I was like, bruh, he's a big dude. <laughs> he's, 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 he's. <laughs> you should probably reassess that. So, but anyway. uh, so were there clear winners in these matches? Were there clear pinfalls? Well, no. So what happened was... Um, in the first match, I believe it happened last week as well, Seth Rollins interfered and got a DQ. So Dawkins technically lost because he DQ'd by uh, getting Buddy Murphy out of the pin. Um, and then, um, like, Seth and Buddy look like they're about to run away. Sorry, Murphy. Um, Seth and Murphy look like they're about to run away and Montez Ford is like, oh, like – you were you scared like you scared Rollins is like you know last week Dawkins hit your boy so hard that they lost his first name like I'm gonna do the same <laughs> to you <laughs> yeah I know right great and he's like I'm gonna do the same well to you done. Rollins and I was like oh shit um and then yeah so match gets underway obviously Murphy tries to get involved and so does Dawkins or they have a little biffo on the outside of the ring as well referee kicks out Dawkins first and now like Seth and um Seth and Murphy are all like, oh, yeah, awesome. And they cuddle and stuff like that. And then you hear the referee go, you know what? You're out of here too. And he kicks out Buddy Murphy as well. So that was pretty good. And there was an amazing match between Seth and um, Montez. Seth and Montez Ford. Yeah, really good match. Um, unfortunately, it did end with Seth getting a massive stomp for the win. Mm. Um and yeah, like with that, it, it begged the question, like at Super Showdown, it is Murphy and Rollins versus um, Street Profits for the tag team titles of Raw. Do we think that, like, I don't think the Street Profits are ready for titles yet. Uh, I would like them to, but <clears throat> it's interesting. They haven't had enough ring time. I completely agree. And it's very, that one thing that I find, that I find most fascinating out of this, especially with Raw on especially with them being singles here so mm-hmm. this is the uh one of the first times we've seen them as singles competitors, competitors on, the yeah. ma- on the main roster uh mm-hmm. so add this to the likes of uh, heavy machinery who we are still yet to see split every mm-hmm. match they've been in they've been as a tag team and uh mm-hmm. you know viking raiders have been the same uh and street profits were the same until now mm-hmm. uh 
so my concern is I, I find that if you when you start splitting the teams it's kind of a, a point of concern Mm-hmm. Uh, not saying that there's any any concern about uh, the strip officers as a whole. I believe they are a great team. However, having them split up, yeah, it's just in the past has been, mm. you know, uncomfortable. I, I think with that one, in my personal opinion, I think you're thinking a little bit too into it because you've obviously only ever seen machinery, heavy machinery versus other tag teams. Mm. So like Seth and Murphy. Oh, so I was using like, them as examples, but yes. I get, yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like obviously Seth and Murphy are like individuals. So they're like, I guess, showcasing them as individuals as well. Um, but more so showcasing Murphy and Rollins. Mm. So, but I mean that when, so when you look at, so when Buddy Murphy uh, did, was called up, same with Seth Rollins. Oh, Seth Rollins was kind of as part of the Shield, I guess. But that's been, yeah. that was quite a long time ago. Mm. Both of them prior to tag becoming a tag team on on as it stands right now, both had an extensive history as singles competitors. Where yes. Street Profits have come up as a team, uh, mm-hmm. sorry, Viking Raiders came up as a team, uh, mm-hmm. Heavy Machinery came up as a team, and they, none of them have been split up until. Oh, yep, yep. I get that's you the know. point I'm getting at. Sorry, yep, I yep, I'm with you. Yep. No, that's yeah. not so it's, so it's just it's just interesting to see them mm. have them split. But saying that they're as they're taking on a team that is built of two individual, uh, <clears throat> uh, two individual, uh, t- individual superstars. Sorry, I had a mm-hmm. real hard, hard time for the words there. Uh, yeah. th- this is a good demonstration of a weakness within their tag team. Mm-hmm. See where Buddy and Seth can both be effective as a tag team, as they yeah. as they are the current Raw champions, um, mm. but then That's also demonstrating true. that they can be effective singles competitors. And what yeah. we've seen here is a concern. So with street yeah, with street true. profits, like as a like cool, it's great to be a team, but it's very concerning if they cannot be individual competitors. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting, but. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a segue. Uh, mm. <laughs> Angel Gaza and Umberto. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, the first thing I noticed about this was like they had an interview backstage with Charlie Caruso. Ah, crap. I just worked out a good segue. Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do it before I start? No, because it's a different segment of the show. So. Okay. Well, yeah. Anyway, they're having an interview with um, Charlie Caruso. And obviously, as always, Elena Vega speaking on behalf of her uh, employee or whatever they want to call it. Um, and she could, I shoot you not, she goes, um, she's talking about Umberto and she goes, something, 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 Dimples Carrillo. <laughs> and I was like, hey, Dimples, it's catching on. Thanks for watching, Zelina. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, like they have this little interview. They talk about how they're going to take out the trash that is, um, that is Umberto Carrillo. Oh, sorry. Umberto. Um, puts a lot of pump into that art, doesn't she? Mm, she really does. Um, and then, yeah, as they're leaving, um, Charlie's like, you know, thank you so much for the interview, Zelina. Um, and Angel Garza's like, or, oh, um, uh, oh, the, it was a, like something, something, oh, there's, there's a fine line between, um, or something about pleasure and work or something like that. And he's just like, and it was a pleasure working with you, Charlie, and like kisses her hand and like, he's all like, you know, cause he's like the ladies man or whatever. All right, I'm just gonna put this out of there, right? So he's allegedly the ladies man of, uh, of Raw right now. That's what he's trying mm-hmm. to push himself as. He's yeah. fucking married. And he got, I think he proposed to his current partner on NXT or on the like, performance center. Like, there is clear to history here of him being a married man. Not on the yeah. main roster, of course, but there's history. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> it, sure. Uh, Max in the chat says, soccer has a goalie. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it was a good little thing. And then obviously it's Umberto versus uh, Angel Gaza. And my God, I could watch them wrestle forever. They went hard. They went real that was hard. Like, the weird, like, he- like they were do- doing handstands and their legs, headstands and their legs were interlocked and they were like slapping each other in the face. Funny as shit. And then like um, Umberto was on the apron and he's like <laughs> upside down on his head. And he just gets super kicked in the face and oh, they just did some really good things that were just like absolutely beautiful. And initially I was like, oh, I don't know about this, but now I'm just like, give me more. And the best thing about this is this is a battle of a family. These are two mm-hmm. cousins going at it. And mm-hmm. uh, so that kind of adds this additional layer. So especially mm-hmm. with the likes of uh, Angel Gaza not officially having a, uh, 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 a call-up, 
Mm. Also, Yawn's coming at me today. He hasn't had officially had a call up, so it's this weird line of like, is he? Is he not? Where is he sitting? Mm. And then Umberto, who is who is a main roster superstar, to be mm-hmm. like almost uh, defending his turf against his cousin, as well yeah. as p- presenting that you know that he is the stronger in the family. It was mm-hmm. it was a good bit of a uh, good bit of juice going into this one. Yeah, really good. As weird as it sounds, it was really good storytelling in their match. Mm. Like the fighting was like telling a whole story. I agree. Mm-hmm. I have to it yawn again, beautiful. but I'm not going to. That's the kind of – you can yawn right now because that's the kind of match, like, I want to see. Like, when I'm watching wrestling, I want to see those matches that do tell a story. Like, you know, you really can tell a story in a match. Um, and, yeah, that was that was a perfect example of it. It was beautiful. Well, because that's what we're here for. We're here to talk about the stories and the feuds and the matches mm-hmm. can be good. The matches can be brilliant, which mm-hmm. we're still going to talk about because we love good matches. But we're, we're mm-hmm. also big suckers for the story, and that's mm-hmm. what we're here for. Exactly right. Speaking of uh, some potentially good story, we uh, we got a little bit a little bit more about uh, the uh, Paul Drew McIntyre heading into WrestleMania. Mm. So we got to have a little bit of story time with him as he uh, on air talked about his his time with the WWE about you know being there for thirteen years and having that time away after being fired and you know part of three MB and so he said he said tell his uh his journey within wwe and uh and how he regardless of the outcome of super showdown mm-hmm. he's still going to be the one to take that championship yeah which paul Heyman and brock lesnar did come out earlier in the evening and say that brock is not losing to ricochet at super showdown he'll see drew mcintyre at wrestlemania and he'll take out drew mcintyre at wrestlemania um, but yeah, that aside, like I, that exact story that Drew McIntyre told, he goes into more depth on After the Bell with Corey Graves, the podcast. Yeah. And it, it was an amazing story to hear and you get like the short, sweet version of it. But I think it's really cool that Vince is allowing him to share this story, mm. you know, especially considering, you know, Vince was the one who introduced him and said, this man is a future world champion. And 13 years later, he's only just getting that opportunity now. So it's, you know, it's really interesting that, you know, Vince is letting him tell that story and like the fact that he's also, you know, holding himself accountable for his actions and saying, you know, it was my fault I got fired. I'm wearing that and I'm working past it. Mm. Um, So that was really, really, really cool as well. It was absolutely beautiful. And you can see the passion and emotion in his eyes when he's speaking. And yeah. I just, I am so on the Drew McIntyre train. Like, I'm riding that. I'm sailing those seas all the way to WrestleMania to watch him pillage that title. <laughs> Makes I sense. Guess. I like it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, we just we just lost stream there for a second, but it's back, oh, no. so we're all good. It's right. I mean, it's been really shit tonight. I don't know what's going on with it. But anyway, uh, yeah. So look. So I guess so. You're on. You're on the page for this uh, newly face. Drew McIntyre? 100%. Mm. I find it very fascinating because I was thinking about it this, this afternoon, actually. So with the idea of like, we, we do find that a lot of people, a lot of superstars, when they do get within the uh, title picture is where we see a change in their demeanor, a change mm-hmm. in their, uh, uh, a change in their presentation, I guess. So we see, we see them go from the sort of unhappy uh, people to this, happy well, happy and enthusiastic because they're now part of that title picture i guess it's like a lot mm-hmm. can have that involvement a lot can get them into that place what do you what do you think about mm-hmm. that that's very true i think it de- it depends on the person too like it, it weirdly enough like this time last year we were like oh drew mcintyre and now we're like yay drew mcintyre I think, you know, seeing that evolution of him and still thinking like earlier this year, like Drew McIntyre is a bad guy and then how it all switched in a second at WrestleMania. Yeah. Uh, Sorry, at Royal Rumble. It it is almost like he has this pent up rage and emotion and and everything that he had coming into this all was all nicely. uh, I'm trying to explain it. It's almost like this. Yeah, I think the frustration stems from not being in that picture and not yes. being being given the opportunities that he believed that he had earned. And, yeah, and now that's that why he's he got angry. there, yeah, he feels validated. He feels connected once again, and that's where he's yeah. at now. What do you think about? Yeah, do you agree with that? Yeah, hundred hmm. percent. 
It's very good. But as we mentioned, uh, heading into Super Showdown uh, tomorrow as we record this now. So by the time this goes up, Super Showdown will have happened. Uh, Mm. We're going to see Brock Lesnar versus Ricochet in uh, Mm. Brock's mandatory match ahead of WrestleMania. Mm -hmm. I... It's going to be over in seconds. Mm. It's totally going to be a squash match, unfortunately. I... I love Ricochet's message and I love what he's trying to get through, but he's not gonna. He's he, he's not gonna. Mm. No, we are definitely the way that Drew McIntyre was looking at Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble. There's no way in hell that he's not. We're not seeing those two at WrestleMania. Mm. I agree. No chance. Because I, I for, 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 once again from that interaction, uh, Brock has a new bit of. Uh, oomph in him, which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so he himself would Even be very Paul keen. Even Paul Heyman was making really, really good jokes and stuff like that as well. It all seems like they're in a really good, like, they're all in really punchy spots and everybody's looking real powerful at the moment. I agree. Um, so I definitely think that, yeah, Brock's just going to, you know, show his strengths to show Drew McIntyre what he's in for at WrestleMania. By absolutely just annihilating Ricochet. I Which, agree. And, and I think that is what's going to happen. We're going to see uh, Ricochet mm-hmm. just get smushed uh, for mm-hmm. good or for bad. It's what's probably what's going to happen. But, but we'll mm-hmm. uh, we'll run through our, our uh, Super Showdown predictions at the end of the show tonight. Mm-hmm. But uh, so uh, Ricochet did have a match against Luke Gallows. So the original mm-hmm. uh, uh, transition I was going to use before when I was, was going to reconnect my segue was the idea about being individual competitors and uh, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, who we see mm-hmm. split many, many times. And all, mm-hmm. they, are, they, in fact, may be the best tag team in the world, yet they still go mm-hmm. a ride of singles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 100%. So, uh, let's have a chat about this one. Yeah, so I believe I... I still haven't watched last week's Raw because I've been so busy. Um, But I believe last week Ricochet put out a challenge to AJ Styles, which Luke Gallows ended up accepting for this week. Um, And Luke Gallows does tell AJ Styles and uh, Carl Anderson to head down the back. He's got this. He'll take it, Um, which he doesn't. He gets his ass in <laughs> Ricochet. Um, it was a good match. Like, there was, it was really, like, he controlled the match for a lot of the time, but ultimately Ricochet did win. Um, and then we see the OC walking backstage after the match and Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, like, yelling at each other and arguing. And AJ just snaps. He's like, just shut up. Like, you know, we need to start proving to people again that we are the original, the official, the only club that matters. Um, you know, he's talking about, basically, the best way to describe it is, like, they're trying to get their mojo back. Yeah. Um, and while they're going on about this, Alistair Black starts to walk past and AJ calls out Alistair. And he's like, you know, um, you think you own the place around here. We're going to show you why we are who we are. And they just beat all three of them. to just beat the piss out of Alistair Black. Um, and we do see a few segments of him like walking backstage. I like, clearly like beat the fuck up. Mm. Um which leads into a match. Um, Alistair Black sort of does come out. He does his entrance all jacked up and stuff as well. Yeah, so it's um, pretty confronting. As he does his little, like, uh, uh, coffin rise, he's, like, mm-hmm. holding his side, balances off. He, he's looking really worse for wear. Real beat up. Um, and he's got a match against Eric Rowan as well. So I was real, like, oh, shit. Like, he's not going to win this because he did beat Eric Rowan last week. Um um, with, I believe it took two black masses to get Rowan down enough. It to, did last week. That's correct. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he, um, Rowan basically commands the whole match. And then Alistair Black out of nowhere, just, oh, he threw Rowan into the stairs or something like that. And the cage. That yeah. Rowan so, uh, with. during, during the match itself, it did stick within the ring, but then at one point it did kind of slip out the side. And as they start mm-hmm. ringside Dawson, uh, he, d- uh, Rowan does attempt to jack up Black. Black jumps out of the way, uh, collects those stairs, sends the mm. uh, the the cage the, the cage with the you know what we believe is a raccoon We're to blaze it. with the raccoon he gets rocketed across the side of the ring. This catches after two weeks ago. I think it's Shayna Baszler in there. Makes sense. She she did bite <laughs> that other hand that one time. Mm. Um, probably why why rocketed so hard because she's not in mm-hmm. there. Um, yeah. but. Yeah, so he so that goes Skyward. That catches Rowan's attention, runs around, picks it up, apologizing the ta- the cage refs are like seven count. Uh, Rowan then jumps, oh, yeah, runs back in, out. gets up, bush, black mass, bush, black mass, one, two, three, 
win. Yeah. Repeat ending. Um, and as Alistair Black's like hobbling up the like the ramp, Sarah comes up and she's like, you know, how'd you defy the odds this week, Alistair Black? And he's just like, rage. He's like Un- angry. Unbridled rage. Rage. Yeah. Ruthless 100%. aggression. <laughs> Ruthless. Um, but yeah, he's basically like, you know, AJ Styles, I'm coming for you next week. You're going to be the victim of my rage. Um, and he's like, I'm going to make it very clear for everybody. Like, you know, I'm going to beat the shit out of him, basically. So, yeah, I'm interested to see that. I want to see that so mm-hmm. bad. Yeah. 100%. I definitely want to see that, too. Especially with this, with these rumors of uh, AJ Styles v Undertaker at Mania. Yeah. How about uh, <laughs> AJ Styles with Undertaker light, you know? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. Exactly right. Um. I'll talk about it later, but briefly, apparently Undertaker was spotted in Saudi Arabia. He was. Ooh. Sneaky, sneaky. Yeah. Anyway. But yes, I'm very excited for this match between Alistair Black mm. and Ricochet. I do think it... Uh, Alistair Black and... Uh, AJ. AJ, sorry. Um, I think it will be absolutely fantastic. I'm very, very keen. They, they both go super hard. Uh, and I think AJ's got the speed to, to be able to... Dodge the striking ability of uh, mm-hmm. of uh, Black. One thing I would like to see though is the attempt of phenomenal forearm into a Black Mass. Like jump, boosh, yes. dropped. That's how I want to see that Beautiful. go down. Uh, quickly before we head into the final section, let's have a chat about the uh, about our truth mm-hmm. and uh, a, a truth TV segment. Yeah, I was very confused. I was like, since when does Truth have a segment? Um, and then he's like, you know, my guests, Lana and Bobby Lashley, and they come out and Truth is like, okay, so um, I'm going to ask you guys some questions. And Lana's like, no, you're not. Like, we don't give a shit about Truth TV. We're not here for this. You have a scheduled match against my Bobby. And Truth's like, yeah, but Bobby's big. Like, really big. Like, really 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 big <laughs> like I, I'd, I'd rather just ask him some questions so have have you seen the new sonic the hedgehog movie and lana's just like oh like people are shouting rusev day and lana's like rusev day is cancelled and then she's like ring the bell which is kind of like, true so a bit of fun fact so rusev was scheduled to uh to have a match uh uh as part of this giant tournament thing in Saudi Arabia. Yes, However, yep, that- uh, due to contract disputes, he hasn't re-signed and uh, he's been pulled yeah. from said tournament is now replaced, replaced with, with Rey Mysterio. Mysterio. But they were still, like the advertisements they were posting still had Rusev's face on them. Yeah, so they'd mentioned that it's changed while also being like, oh, no, no, it's, it's now Ray. Yep, yep. Um, basically, match starts, Bobby and and uh truth have like a little mm. biffo bobby does ultimately get the win with a vicious vicious spear um and that was that there really wasn't much to it i think it was just a, a showcase match i guess is what you would call it just because truth and bobby are both in this uh it's a gauntlet match i believe yes yes um for some i don't know how to pronounce it but it's some trophy or something like mm. that um so, so yeah, that actually explains my question because i was thinking about it, i'm like why why did this need to happen? But then you've kind of nailed it on my head, on the head there. Because I was as watching this, yeah. I'm like, why are we seeing Truth versus Lashley? What an unrequested match! Yeah, <laughs> couldn't yeah, be no, any definitely. more not needed. Mm-hmm. But uh, you kind of nailed it on the head there of why. Exactly right. <sighs> exactly right. Excuse me. Now, once because like the Super Showdown, it is a bit of a pit stop. It, it's uh, mm-hmm. kind of the pay per view for fe- it is kind of the f- maybe for February, mm-hmm. but WWE are already smart and they're already looking ahead into uh, um, the into March chamber. with the Elimination Chamber. Oof. What do you that, that's chat? Well, I've been. I feel like I've been commanding this. So why don't you? No, I'm enjoy. I'm enjoy. I, I I run. The, I run this shit all the time. So I'm very glad for you to take some takes ahead of me. But I'll, I'll, I'm happy to run in there. So we did have uh, the contract signing for the women's elimination chamber match with the winner getting a shot against Becky Lynch. Uh, so we had on stage. We had uh, Oscar, Natalia, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, and Ruby Riot. Uh, mm-hmm. However, Shayna Baszler was not. It was nowhere to be seen. Um, now Lawler was there being officiator and I'm pretty sure he said alright gentlemen at some point um, probably so that. 
<laughs> because fuck <laughs> him. <Lola>. Um, <laughs> he may have said, ladies and gentlemen, I just didn't hear the first part. I have reasons to believe that he's a piece of shit. So that's probably the most likely, yeah. like, likely case. Uh, now, I've actually titled uh, this stream, The Problem with Contract Signings. Now, the reason mm-hmm. I've named that is the end of the episode this week, because there is a problem with contract signings. Mm-hmm. They're like, so as the commentary team are like, what's happening because as with every contract signing it went into utter fucking chaos so uh Mm -hmm. it starts with asuka so yeah ranting yelling and and raving about not you know shana not being here and this is a problem yeah she made it very clear that like she was like where the fuck is shana baszler and was like i think i can tell what you're saying racist um so i I, it's implied because i you know i am jerry lawler and the worst and i heard all I heard was the word Shayna. Um, but it's like, you know, <laughs> she's late or something like that. As I and saw in the venue earlier, either she's lost, she's not here, mm-hmm. or she's just simply doing a no-show. And I'm like, well, yes. that's unacceptable. How come everyone else is required to be here? But then mm. we come to learn. So we see uh, Sarah Logan signs at first, and then gets passed mm-hmm. around to Natalia. The, obviously, the crowd go wild because they yep, are all they're fans. Yep. Uh, she's Canadian. Canadian. So, you know, being in Winnipeg, they get super excited. Uh, Liv mm-hmm. Morgan writes it. Great pop for Liv Morgan, by the way. Uh, oh, yeah, huge. Yeah, Morgan Absolutely wanders over video. the other side, passes the uh, the contract down to Ruby Riot. Oh, she they doesn't pass it. Down. She slams it on the desk. Ruby Riot signs it, and they just lock eyes on each other. I'm like, fuck, they yes. They stand up, Laura, yes, like, hey, hey, yes. hey, ladies, please don't. He was like, please don't put the claws away because I am Laura. And then, yeah, Sarah Logan arcs up as well, and he's like, sit down, Sarah. And I was like, hey, let her get involved. Yeah, let her, let her her have a moment. Uh, Asuka mm-hmm. then starts to sign, does it, and then like, dun, 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 dun. One thing I did love about that is the commentators did mention like obviously we know that that Liv and Ruby have a very real like where does Sarah Logan sit in that and I was like yeah where does Sarah Logan sit in that <laughs> it was interesting so yeah as Asuka's about to put pen to paper Shayna's music kicks in everyone turns mm-hmm. to the ramp she's not there she's shielding it she's coming through the crowd Mm-hmm. Thankfully, she bit yeah. no she bit no one on the way, which is much appreciated. Thank goodness, much appreciated. Yep. Keep your teeth to yourself. Uh, so she comes in, signs it, and then Lola's like, "Fuck you, I'm out." And then he uh, pussy pussies his way out of the ring, goes off, mm-hmm. and then proceeds to let everyone just eat shit. So Natalia, yeah, so it's uh, yeah, Natalia gets up in Shayna's face. Yeah, gets up in her shit, and be like, some mm-hmm. some some. Asks like, "Fuck this noise!" Jumps the table. Pushes Grabs Natalia. the microphone, pushes Natalia and starts shouting. Natalia just decks her and then proceeds to punch mm-hmm. the fuck out of Asuka's face. Amazing. Yeah. And thankfully, and then- this is the moment that Liv Morgan's like, this is my time to shine. Then just jumps across the table, spears the shit out of Ruby Riot's face. Mm-hmm. Absolutely loved it. Table's going everywhere. Sarah's like, oh shit. Sarah, Sarah turns around, yeah. gets in on it as well. Yep, she's trying to go for both Ruby and Liv, and I was like, oh, shit. And Shayna's just standing there, arms in the air, watching everything going yeah, around her. Slapping her hands. In yeah, come refs and her. random crew as they start removing tables and chairs. I'm very mm-hmm. quickly, I might add. So, like, okay, what's yeah. going on here? Uh, Shayna's just impressively watching it all sort of go around her, and mm-hmm. it's this, it's an interesting approach because uh, Shayna kind of has the most to prove here, but everyone around her mm-hmm. seems to want to scrap amongst themselves in a way, almost mm-hmm. ignoring the fact that why they're there. Like I, you know, because yep. as it stands, Shayna. This sh- screamed to me that Shayna is the one that's. I and I agree, because, and I think the, the other one should have noticed she that. Said- yeah, last week she did say to Becky, she's like, the Elimination Chamber, like, of course I'm going to win it. I'm a cage fighter mm. and it's a giant cage. Spot on. Absolutely spot on. Like, and on top mm-hmm. of that, like, you know, and that's, and that's what the other women here should have been thinking rather than pettily yeah. fighting amongst each other. What, gang like, up to take gang out up on Shayna. Shayna is the one mm-hmm. here. She's the young blood. She's got the fire. She's got the the gusto to be a, a the dominant force with, with this chamber match yet they yeah. proceed to bicker amongst themselves now granted yeah. i want to see Liv morgan and ruby Riot punch the fuck out of each other but it also didn't quite make like, sense you'd think mm-hmm. they'd be like all right enemy of my enemy is my friend i want a championship shot Mm-hmm. Let's put this aside for a minute and focus on the one person who we know is the target of the current champion, Becky Lynch, mm-hmm. who then proceeds to make her way out and confront Shayna. Yeah, beautifully as well. She comes out with those meme glasses on again. 
And she just puts her belt down. She goes flying into the ring and just takes Baszler straight down. And they just start dozing. And then referees come out and they're pulling him apart. And everybody's chanting, let them fight. And then they break free and jump each other. And uh, it was just absolutely beautiful. Um, and, yeah, I'm just really hyped for the elimination. I but- agree. And I do think, for like, A, look, it's, it's straight up. It can be it can be straight up seen right now that they are coming out of uh, so Shayna will be coming out of out of uh, yeah. elimination chamber. Um, we well, let's throw it out now. So with the idea, mm-hmm. so there's two in the ring and four in the four in the cages. How do you think this will go? Do you think that Shayna will be one of the first to get involved, or will she be hanging back a little bit later? Uh, how do you see this happening? I believe it'll start with Ruby Wright and Liv Morgan. That's a good place to start. And then and then Sarah yeah. gets a, to have a run in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Well, the reason I ask is because, uh, you know, we've seen Shayna be impressive and, and decimate, mm. especially with, around the Royal Rumble as she came into mm-hmm. spot 30 and made, managed to achieve the exact same elimination numbers as Belair. Mm-hmm. been a short in shorter window of time so i, yeah. I kind of want to see her be one of the first to win and then just proceed to eliminate everybody yeah that that would be cool too that's what i personally would like to see because i want to yeah. see her go through uh through them all because a, a from a to- storytelling perspective which is why we why we do the show is that that shows her to be incredibly strong incredibly strong it's the yeah, it, sh- it demonstrates that she is above you. all these petty storylines that we're seeing around she is bigger than this live versus um R- ruby yeah you know natal whatever the fuck she's doing you know she if oscar was originally the one to uh you know be the get the win over uh, uh, Becky to be the one mm. weakness in Becky's armor. I beat her mm. in like fucking no time at all, and I think yeah. that's what we need to see. We need to see Shayna be Definitely. that fucking hard, ver- hard person to take on Becky. Yeah, but yeah, it'll also set up a lot of potential post WrestleMania when putting that here now. Shayna Baszler takes that championship. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So I think that after that we could, we could see Oscar in that picture again, which is great because mm-hmm. Oscar's brilliant and she's a good, she's certainly a good, uh, a good person to battle in a in a title feud. Um, mm-hmm. I don't see neither Liv nor Ruby in that picture anyway. Natalia mm-hmm. possibly. Sarah's not in it. Um, yeah. But there is potential there because I do think that yeah. we will lose Becky for a little while after yeah. Mania as she goes to lick and tend to her wounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm. I agree completely. Yeah. But it was, it was pretty good. But before we... Mm-hmm. That was the show as a whole. Not too bad. Not too... Not, yeah. It was pretty... It was all right. So how, how would you how would you rate the show, Gem, as I pull up Super Showdown's card? I'd throw it straight down the line and give it a big old cut. Big old cut. I agree. I think down the line. Mm-hmm. So for those who don't know, we rate our show based on a couple of different rankings. You can have the maximum of two Kurt Angles. That's two thumbs up because that our man Kurt Angle does in fact look it like a like thumb. thumb. We have half points, which is a nice bar. So I, I believe, we, I, I agree with you. It's a Kurt. It's right down the middle. Um, there were mm-hmm. some parts that were interesting, like the, the, the contract signing. However, mm-hmm. uh, Oh well, I should add. Well, well I meant to add, add on to the chamber. Uh, sorry, add on to the chamber contract signing was the idea mm. of why the the commentary team were responding as if this never happens. All contract mm. signings go well. Contract signings always go fucking bonkers, and it's the situation of because as I mentioned, I titled this stream the problem with contract signings, and the mm. problem is this is what we've come to expect. Therefore, mm-hmm. it's unimpressive when they all proceed to bus on each other. Yeah. yeah it's a However, it would be incredibly boring television to watch them sign it and nothing happens. So I do mm-hmm. understand that and it, it is a personal confusion of mine. What's your mm-hmm. stance on this, Gem? What's your stance on these uh, contract signings always going the other direction? I don't think they're necessary and I don't think they should be done to be perfectly honest with you. Mm. It's just like, it, you, you can tell it's filler. Like it just, if you want them to feud, just make them feud. Like it just, they put me to sleep. I lose interest really quickly. Cause I'm like, okay. Cause it's predictable. You do know exactly what's going to happen. And that's why it's not interesting anymore. Agreed. And it's one of those things because this, this is the the businessy side of, of pro wrestling, and I think it should mm. be kept that way. I think it mm. sh- should be kept separate, 
as in yeah. like you know they sign behind the thing like the con you know how about all these other matches that get contract their contract signed we never see mm-hmm. like fuck exactly all right? right so mad dog in the chat jumps and goes someone usually is going through a table and i agree and mm-hmm. that once again that is the predictability of it now you mm-hmm. know with with you know remove the kayfabe for a second pro wrestling can be quite predictable like the amount of mm-hmm. times that you know we predict stuff and it just happens to be exactly how it happens but the part of the fun is when it doesn't do that and mm-hmm. we want those we want those expectations subverted um mm-hmm. but i i think i'm, I'm with you jim the only way mm-hmm. to resolve this issue that i have with contract to signings is by to remove them completely mm-hmm I think it's a good place to go but let's, let's have a quick chat about super showdown now neither, neither you or i will not be doing a a super showdown mm-hmm. themed episode a special one i'm just gonna give a fuck about it um mm-hmm. but there will be points there may be points of conversation depending on the outcome here mm-hmm. so i've pulled up the card let's run through our predictions of what we think is going to happen and then we'll uh, wrap this bad boy up and i'll start playing some games here on twitch.tv mm-hmm. slash pop culturist uh, on the kickoff show, we have note uh, the OC versus the Viking Raiders. Raiders. I agree. I think the Raiders. Uh, in the chat, uh, uh, Mad Dog, I think Max is still there as well. Let us know how you think these are going to go. Uh, I agree with you. I think the Raiders will take the win here. I do think it is uh, sort of a conti- as much as we don't see a lot of story at Super Showdown. I think it's worth noting that uh, with the OC winning the best tag team in the world title at Saudi Arabia at Crown Jewel, I think it was in October against the Viking Raiders. Against the Viking Raiders, it would be a, a, a little bit of a cool story to see that okay. to that move forward. However, yeah, also definitely. it nicely fits the WWE 50-50 booking. Mm-hmm. Uh, Umberto Carrillo versus Angel Gaza again. Uh, Umberto. You think Umberto would take the win? Why is that? Yeah, fifty-fifty booking. And we do know that, uh, <laughs> and with Andrade returning, mm-hmm. maybe this is sort of bury the hatchet on Angel Gaza as he returns yeah. back to NXT. Yeah, because um, uh, Andrade is in that championship. Match that is correct. So he he his uh, uh, suspension has been lifted, it and has. he's come back. Unfortunately, we lost some Joe there. That's true. That's a bummer. Uh, Mansoor versus Dolph Ziggler. The oh, Mansoor. Of course, he's Mansoor. He's fr- he he's yeah. from Saudi Arabia, and every yeah, time he's gone there, that's he's the only reason he's on the card. Correct, yeah. Mundo. Um, yeah, that's pretty straightforward. The t- two wake the t t u w a i q two wake. I'm gonna go the two wake. Yep, two wake. The two wake trophy gauntlet match. With, as we mentioned, Rey Mysterio, R-Truth, AJ Styles, Andrade, Eric Rowan, and Bobby Lashley. Um, okay. I so I'll go those names the... again. Rey Mysterio, R-Truth, AJ Styles, Andrade, Eric Rowan, and Bobby Lashley. AJ Styles is walking out with it because then they'll have the best in the world trophy and that one, and then they'll establish themselves. I agree um, because mm-hmm. I, I'm very similar to yourself in the idea that without there, there is no way for them to carry the belt at this stage. They're mm-hmm. both the United States Championship, the the WWE, so the WWE Championship and the Raw Tag Team Championships are all in separate storylines right now. So the only way mm-hmm. to have them legitimized as a tag team is for them to be the best in the world and the gauntlet match trophy holder. Yes. Uh, and I do think that also sort of sets them up to uh, uh, for Mania, because I, I do mm-hmm. think, you know, with the uh, Undertaker being spotted at Saudi Arabia, that AJ mm-hmm. Styles will take the win. Gong, out comes Taker, kicks the fuck out of AJ Styles. Yeah. Build definitely. up towards WrestleMania. Yeah, yeah. It'll be like AJ's insulting or something like that, and Undertaker comes out and puts him in his place type thing. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Uh, SmackDown Women's Championship, Bailey versus Naomi. I want Naomi to win, but Bailey will. Um, just just because we picked everything the same so far, I'm gonna put Naomi on there. <laughs> Mostly because I think that uh, 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 if I do think Bailey's gonna win, uh, it would be cool, and I think it's important for us to have separate <laughs> separation of our picks. Uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I think it is like it just proves how much of a throwaway Saudi shows are. That's also true. But yeah, Bailey's gonna come out the win here. Yeah, Bailey's um, going to. I think there may be an extension of the feud heading into uh, Mania. Uh, yeah, 100%. because uh, there's not been a big enough build up. No, and like our original original pitch of uh, Sasha and Bailey at Mania doesn't look to be happening happening. So mm. there was interesting um, 
There was yeah, Sasha's going to be in the Mandalorian. Yeah, so she's off shooting, so she's not around for a little while. Mm. Interesting thing on Twitter, by the way. Speaking of Sasha Banks, uh, mm. Trish Stratus tweeted uh, a little small video about being like 15 years in the making or something, 15 years or mm. something X amount of years as part of wrestling, and at the end, it showed a picture of of uh, her and Sasha Banks yelling at each other from the first Royal Rumble. Mm. Uh, Trish retired at last WrestleMania. It's probably a bit too soon to have her return. What do you think she's mm. getting at? I have no idea. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. Like, is she hinting that she's going to fuck up Sash Banks? Is Trish Stratus also in uh, Mandalorian? Probably not. Who knows? <laughs> uh, <laughs> King Cor- King Corbin versus Roman Reigns in a Reigns Roman in a Reigns. steel cage. Yep. Roman Reigns is coming out the win. It's going to end that feud. End that feud. Get Roman in his mm-hmm. place. Heading into Mania for the yes. US Championship. Mm-hmm. SmackDown Tag Team Champions, The New Day versus Miz and Morrison. I think The New Day will come out with the win, but this will extend their feud. Uh, I think Miz and Morrison. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, uh, Scotty, two, Scotty Two Thotty is in the chat. Hi, Scott. He says, hello, Hag and Jim. Hey, man, how you doing? Um... I, I I disagree. I think Miz and Morrison will win. Mm. Uh, mostly because they need to do something with them. Mm-hmm. And I think New Day are already pre-lined up to then get up in the business of the Usos. Now, gr- okay. granted, it may not have, oh, it, yeah. Yeah, it may not have the championship good. involved in it. Because um, my original, as we, as I titled last, uh, the SmackDown video this week... Uh, mm-hmm you know new shows versus new day wrestlemania i do th- mm-hmm. still think that will happen but it may not be yeah. for a belt yeah which which would still be cool because it would still be mm-hmm. an absolute ripper of a match oh yeah they bang a matches over guys uh raw tag team championship as we discussed seth rollins for uh, and and buddy murphy versus the street profits I would love to see the Street Profits take it, and I honestly want them to mm-hmm. um, because I think there's more going on with the feud with Seth Rollins and KO and them having tag belts is just sort of burying it a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they've got more storyline with that feud, and I think the tag team titles will change hands. I disagree. I think they will change hands. I believe it's too soon to have them removed from Rollins and from Murphy because it's that situation is similar to the OC. Because, uh, you know, Rollins and Street Profits are a more important tag team at this sense comparatively to the OC. Even compared to, to Street Profits, I guess, it's not going anywhere. They are staying yeah. because as as we're I think we're just on the precipice of what this Monday Night Messiah shtick can be. I think it's worthwhile for them to keep it for a while. The other yeah. idea is they lose it, as you mentioned, and then maybe AOP come and take it off uh, Street Profits. Yeah, probably the only other way to go about it. Mm-hmm. WWE Championship: Brock Lesnar versus Ricochet. Brock Lesnar, yeah, unquestionable. quickly, just else to, to say, prove just how dominant he is coming into WrestleMania. Yeah. This is this is the controversial one. Mm-hmm. Universal Championship, the Fiend Bray Wyatt versus Goldberg. The Fiend. Goldberg. Yep. Nah. Yep. Nah. Yep. Not without assistance. Goldberg is taking the championship at Super Showdown, and I will give you two reasons. Tell me. One. Uh, Goldberg can take that belt and take the heat that comes with it. If anybody else takes that belt, they're instantly going to be booed out of the building. Uh, so with the alleged plans of uh, Roman Reigns to become champion at WrestleMania, we don't want Roman getting booed out of the building again, do we? Because that's what it no. used to be. So ha- who? how can he get the belt and it be okay? Goldberg. Yeah, that's true. Goldberg. That's true. And it's Spear versus Spear. That would be a pretty Mm -hmm. rad match um, that I'd like to see. And two, as it has been alleged that uh, uh, John Cena will be returning, as we know, on SmackDown uh, this week, but to get involved in a feud for WrestleMania. How about Mm. we tackle some history between John Cena, Bray Wyatt, I'm in a mania. That's what I want to see. Ooh, now, uh, the question here is like, well, is this a retirement match for John Cena? Probably not. But what a fucking way to go out if it is. 
Like, imagine if John Cena comes out this mm. week and he's like, "This is my final. Like, I want one more WrestleMania and I'm done." Because this is going. This that this story has two. Like that story alone has two impressive parts to it. If John Cena wins, he will then tie for the most championship. Like, let's say presumably Bri- uh, Brian retains. Right? Sorry, Bri- Bray Wyatt retains. So if mm. there is this elusive match between John Cena and uh, Bray Wyatt, this yeah. and, and if if John wins, he will tie Ric Flair as the most world championship holder, man. Yeah. And Bray Wyatt has a history with John Cena mm-hmm. from his time in the uh, Firefly Funhouse. So yes. in terms of a good storyline, that's perfect. Yeah. However, it does yeah, it does no, it, it does revolve around him retaining the championship, which ruins my original theory. But it all comes down to how they want to uh, uh, how they want to tell that story moving forward. So, yeah, if they want to keep Bray to retain, I think there's a cool storyline there for John Cena. Uh, if he mm-hmm. loses it to Goldberg, there's a cool storyline for uh, Roman to become the champion. Yeah, yeah Mad definitely. Dog in the chat throws in his predictions. Raiders. Mm-hmm. to get the uh to win the match into the OC Angel Gaza yeah. Mansoor mm-hmm. AJ to win the tournament Bailey to retain mm-hmm. Roman Warren, mm-hmm. Roman to win the cage match uh the new day will retain Rollins will mm-hmm. Rollins and Murphy will retain uh Brock mm-hmm. will, will uh will win with no more no less than five su- suplexes uh <laughs> I love that addition uh, <laughs> uh and as we've added and the Fiend will retain to 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 set up the Fiend versus Cena and as well as mm-hmm. Roman versus Goldberg so pretty much added, adding what I said but um it just depends on where I think those two matches will happen at Mania but where the mm-hmm. belt is is the deciding factor mm-hmm because if John Cena yeah. then takes the belt from Fiend, I don't think he will. Which would be amazing if he did. That yeah, and then, would and then Roman would come in and take that belt. But then again, yeah. that would mean Roman gaining a championship outside of Mania. Whatever's after, like what? What's after? Uh, uh, pay, after Mania, what payback? Nah. So, so, unless, he, unless, like, because John but, Cena's not going to hold it until SummerSlam. But even then, no, no, uh, no. John Cena has actively mentioned how he has zero interest in. Um, you know, matching um, Ric Flair's record as well. Yeah. 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 Oh, right. Interesting. Yes. Oh, my leg's asleep. Oh, well, anyway, let's wrap this bad boy up so we can get some games playing. Yes. This yep. has been our raw analysis slash discussion. Uh, and it's come at you. On a Friday morning, normally a Thursday morning, eight AM on your podcast po- podcast services, nine AM on those YouTubes. If you want to join that wrestling conversation, head over to facebook.com slash group slash the pop culturist, Twitter, Discord, Instagram, all those links are in the down below area. If you want to join the conversation as it happens, head over to twitch.tv slash the pop culturist. Re- watch us record not just this show, watch it also watch us record our SmackDown analysis and our PlayStation podcast for the players live here chat to us get involved in the show it's damn good fun you get a little bit of po- pre-show you get a bit of post-show it's the best fun you can have with an evening perhaps i'm not sure give it up to you but if you want to support us financially head over to patreon.com slash the pop cultures or you can head over to our, our shop by going to uh, popcultures.com slash shop uh, if you can also request that you share the conversation and go tell your friends leave a five-star rating on your itunes and your podcast services be sure to give us all the love Help, help get our ears out there because, Jem, I've got to mention this, mm. WWE Live is coming back to Australia. Yes, Raw! It is coming in August. We're coming with the Raw roster. And I don't know about you, but I want to uh, interview some more people. I'm sure you're the same, Jem. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. if you guys help us between now and august get us out there to as many people as we mm-hmm. can br- spread the word of the young mm-hmm. and the wrestlers we may be able to bring you some more interviews hell yeah i don't know about you but i'm pretty excited to see that happen i'm so excited yeah i'm really keen actually like because i'm who will we interview next uh who, who's on raw becky lynch rowan mm-hmm. alistair black Randall. Uh Rand Daddy Orton. <laughs> uh Eric Young. Mm. Mm. The cup, mm. the street profits carry around. The potential oh, could... is huge. Becky Lynch's meme glasses. Becky Lynch's glasses, Becky Lynch's jacket. 
Oh, the, the, her Wiggles outfit. Yep, yeah, it's it's everywhere is a possibility. But until then, I'm Ryan Betson, and I'm Jen, and we'll see you in next week when we start chatting about SmackDown. The Young and the Wrestlers, the pop culturist WWE podcast is fan support over at Patreon at patreon.com slash the pop culturist. And we'd like to thank our Patreon producers and our Patreon founders for their kindness, their support, and their generosity. Our Patreon founders, Alpha Ferret, Craig O'Flaherty, David Chataway, Jesse Stevenson, and Jacob Garner. And our Patreon producers, AJ Abatomi, Damien Holdies, Carl Dunn, Lee Winterchauvin, Nathan Massetti, Paul James, Pure Mongrel, and Sean Levitt.